Tonight we're gathered for a special board meeting. Um, it's on our public budget hearing um, for November 4th tonight. And um, the sole purpose of this special meeting is to review the proposed 2021 budget and get member input and member, um, members' ability to um, see what's there and what's up and about for it. So um, to start the meeting, I'd like to establish quorum. I see Aaron Webb for Tawa Oaks, Lake Ale. Um, Tom Mulcairin from a uh, member at large. Karen Anton, Hunterswood Dogwood. John Mooney, North Point. Bob Petrine, our treasurer and member at large. Oh, I should have also um, noted Karen Anton as our VP. If you're wondering what that noise is, it's the dog finishing his dinner. So I apologize for that. Um, the next um, the next board member that I see. One, two, three, four, five, six. I do not see any other board members. Uh, Mike Collins in the way. Oh, there we go. Mike Collins, um, apartment rep, etc. Um, another so we now have seven out of nine. Uh, so we have quorum. Uh, there we go. Um, and then um, I see that we have our CEO, Hank Lynch, um, our COO, Larry Butler, Cam Adams, Covenants Director, Melissa HR Director, and Chris Shoemaker for our uh, capital projects, et cetera. And I believe that's it for the RA staff. Julie, I, just one of the um, Larry Bob is the CFO, Tom. De oh, thank you. I wondered why I saw two Toms. I mean, two yeah. Larry. Um, thank you for that. Um, all right. So uh, I'd like a motion to uh, adopt the agenda as presented. Um, like if you could put the agenda up for us, please. And I saw um, Karen and Bob both raised their hands. Who would like to take the motion? I defer. Karen Anton would like to, you would like to move to adopt the agenda. Second. I would is what I said. Yep. <laughs> Great. Um, all in, in favor of the uh, meeting agenda. Aye. 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 I believe we have all seven of us for ayes. Um, therefore, it passes, and we're on to member comments. Mike, if you'll help us out on that. Um, I see Ken, uh, for sure, waving at me. Uh, once again, just um, an administrative thing. Um, we'll leave the chat room up. We'll do our best to um, acknowledge and make <laughs> comments in there or um, want to speak or have a question, Mike Leon's going to be uh, watching that and we'll do what we can. So, um, Ken. Good evening, all. It's great to see real people, even though it's only on a monitor. Uh, these have been tough times, and I'm sure you all are doing your best to keep up with it. Uh, thank you for your continued service to the community and for the opportunity to be here tonight as a Reston resident. I am Ken Fredgren of 2407 Bugle Lane, um, and I serve as chairman of Reston Accessibility Committee, RAC, a committee of Reston Citizens Association. Representing RAC, I ask for your budgetary support of two projects. On April 23rd this year, we submitted to Hank Lynch with copies to Larry Butler and Laura Kowalski, an accessibility assessment of Temporary Road Park, recommending remedies of accessibility issues per Americans with Disabilities Act specs. On July 18th this year, we submitted to Hank with the same CCs, an accessibility assessment of North Hills Park, again, recommending remedies of accessibility issues. 
for both parks, the remedies include accessible parking spaces, an accessible route from the parking lot to the pavilion, improved access to grills and fountains, to trash and recycling receptacles, and to accessible outdoor restrooms. As an example of RA's conscientious commitment to accessibility improvements, in November 2017, board members approved similar improvements for Pony Barn Park, which were completed in the spring of 2019. It stands today as an attractive, exemplary community facility, accessible for all. Larry Butler, accompanied by a contractor and a landscape architect, visited both parks and found the suggested remedies in our illustrated assessments practical and feasible. The temporary road parking lot is scheduled already for repair, resurfacing, and restriping in 2021. So that's a convenient opportunity for incorporating accessibility improvements into that project. We're hoping that the North Hills accessibility improvements will be scheduled for 2022. I hope that's good news. The illustrated assessments of the parks are available at our website, restonaccessibility.org. Go to the projects tab and then click on project summary. Thank you so much for this time with you and for listening. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ken, for educating us and sharing uh, your thoughts. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Hi, Tammy. I see Tammy between Would you like to uh, make a comment? Thank you. Um, I just have a procedural question. Um, when are, are we supposed, are members supposed to comment now on budget? Or are we going to have a presentation or how does this work? Thank you. Sure, um, comments now, we'll have a presentation. And then yes, I think we should open it back up to member comments again. Um, can't hear you, Tammy. I you went on mute again. I would like to comment after presentation. Thank you. You're welcome, Tammy. Any Julie, other? do you see any reason for me to hang on for the for that part of the meeting? Or have I made my case well enough? Well, it's up to you. I think that what Hank's planning on presenting might uh, be beneficial to you, uh, but it's your choice. All right, thank you. Anyone else for member comments at this point or shall we get right into the meat of the, the uh, meeting and hear from our CEO? Julie, would you like to mention uh, for folks that would like to make comment that they would need to raise their hands using the participants tab, the little blue hand, if they don't have their camera on? Oh, okay. Sure, thank you, Sean. <laughs> I don't I don't have that little blue hand on my screen, so um, I always forget about that. I only see this part. So if there's no more comments at this point in time, I'd like to go ahead and, and introduce Hank and let you walk us through the 2021 uh, proposed budget and, um, and then we'll to take questions after that presentation. Thank you. Um, Mike, can you can you put the slides up, please? Um, good evening, everyone, and, and thank you for taking the time to, to hear our presentation. That, that's the one I wanted. Yeah, right there, Mike. Thank you. The, the, uh, the purpose of the meeting from my perspective and how I built out uh, the presentation was one to provide a brief overview of what the association does and more specifically how that was tied into the 2020-2022 strategic plan, which uh, currently is still the foundation of our budgeting uh, planning. And then um, to highlight uh, key budget items for 2021 and also to uh, identify uh, three uh, key board decisions 
points that still are in process that need to be made. Um, so that's the gist of what, what my, my presentation will do. Um, can we go to the next slide, please, Mike? Um, I, I think most of you on this call, particularly, um, you know, understand that the, the purpose of RA is stated very clearly in the deed, and it essentially says that that we are in, in um, we exist to to serve the members by by in, um, and to interpret, administer, and enforce the protective covenants and restrictions of the deed for the benefit of the members. Uh, we acquire and own, potentially sell, convey, encumber, and lease property maintain the property for the primary benefit of the members. Uh, we assess, collect, and disperse assessments and charges authorized by the deed. Uh, we promote, I, I, I'd love this line, we promote the peace, health, comfort, safety, and general welfare of our members. We foster the fullest use of the, of the lands and facilities managed by it and serve the leisure time need of members by actively establishing and seeking leisure time programming, and we represent RA's interests where appropriate before public and private organizations. Certainly there are much more detail in, in the deed um, than what I've just shared, but these are kind of the high points um, from my perspective and I think from the staff's perspective of um, what we're directed to do. Can we go to the next slide, please, Mike? Um, the way we do this and the way we're structured to do this is essentially through 25 functional units. Some of them are departments and some of them are sub-departments. And one of the reasons I, I've, I've, and these are how they're identified. And one of the reasons I've put this slide up here and it's, it's for your reference uh, as you go forward um, and continue to, to monitor our budgeting process, the cost center codes are the numbers you see in our especially in our cost uh, of budget. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind as we kind of go through these, these expenses. But these are the 25 basic units that are, we're structured to um, operate and fulfill uh, the, the mandates of our deed. Uh, next slide, please, Mike. Um, when I arrived at C at, at, at as CEO here at Reston, my, um, my marching orders included um, several things. It included addressing our need to generate uh, greater non-assessment revenue while minimizing in, annual um, assessment increases, um, to improve our communications with the membership while also reducing our use of paper to do so, um, improve staff morale, and implement the board's authorized compensation study which and the process which uh, has been referred to as the Archer Report, uh, to conduct research to determine what the membership liked at RA and what improvements they wanted to see RA undertake. And that's really is, uh, was, was part of the brand and markets uh, study. And to lead and incorporate all of this data and all this information into the 2020-2022 strategic plan for ultimate board approval. All those steps were followed and also, I've kind of circled here initially, um, it was emphasized that non-assessment revenue was very, very important in the short term and that we should be striving to increase it by roughly 5% over this, the, the, the period of the, uh, the, the strategic plan. Obviously, COVID has uh, created a significant challenge for us, but it still is at the heart of our planning uh, as we move forward. Uh, next slide, please. This is a, a, a lot of information. I'm certainly not uh, going to read it. Um, but one of the steps that we went through to kind of put all this together was on um, July 18th, 2019, the board and senior staff got together to kind of look at and identify and uh, put words to the Rest Association business model. And specifically, what was the value proposition that we bring to uh, our membership? Um, this is just a one-page way of kind of structuring a business model. The pieces on the left-hand side are associated with costs uh, to the value proposition. The pieces on the right-hand side are associated with, with revenue uh, for the uh, value proposition. 
But the value proposition was, was, was pretty clear. And this is one of those, those times where the staff and the board got together and they, they got little sticky pads, they put it on the board, they spent, had a lot of conversation around it. It, was, it actually was a very uh, positive experience. But the value proposition uh, asked two questions. What member, what member needs does RA uh, solve? And what member uh, problems does RA fix? And what they came up with at that time, which got built into the strategic plan, was that we administer and enforce protective covenants and deed restrictions. We preserve and enhance homeowner property values, and we do that through covenants, DRB, parks and recreations, and community activity. We uh, have common area of maintenance and management, and we do this, I believe, exceptionally well. And we have a unique high quality, we provide unique high quality programs, events, experiences, not offered by other competitors. That was an aspirational thing because not all the things we do uh, fit that, that description, but well, many of them do. And we, we aspire to foster the fullest usage of lands and facilities managed and served the diverse leisure time needs of the association's members. And our, our expense side and our revenue side are bent to try to uh, design to, to try to make all this happen. Next slide, please. This also led um, to the, the kind of creation of um, revenue and cost drivers, some basic assumptions about where we are as an organization and some basic conclusions. Again, I am not gonna read all of this. This is there for all of your, your uh, proving at your own um, at your own time, but a couple of things I did, did want to point out and highlight and we're dealing with currently. Um, one of the revenue and cost drivers is that uh, we need to maintain RA's current inventory of amenities. And over the next five to 10 years, we do have uh, some major capital investment to be required. We uh, currently have five swimming pools and four tennis courts that require more than $250,000 worth of investment uh, that, that is scheduled for the next five to 10 years. A, a couple of key assumptions and was that um, we, we looked at data and we discovered that our 15 pools um, have experienced roughly a 27% decline in usage since 2016 and a 50% decline since 2010. And one of the assumptions was perhaps our features and perhaps, co perhaps competition, uh, particularly from Fairfax County Park Authority might be part of this reason that we, we, we don't necessarily have all the features that, uh, that attract the usage. We also reached the assumption that the TSA residents, uh, which are not members, that current construction going on there, they have newer amenities that are, uh, than RA. Some of these includes quality fitness centers. And right now there's no current motivation to them to become assessment paying members of RA. The county can possibly encourage TSA development to join RA, but that's not a near-term solution and it's just a possibility right now. So some of the conclusions we reached was, and, and this is I think why the board directed me and, and staff to stay focused on non-assessment revenue, that adjusting costs, which you're gonna see we're doing in the, day, in the budget for 2021, and growing non-assessment revenue must be a priority near-term and that exploring alternative funding sources, including renegotiating profit revenue could be, rev could be a revenue option, but not a near-term solution. Um, so there's, there's other highlights in here, and I, I can encourage you all to kind of go through it at your, your own leisure. But uh, these are all the things that led to the development of the 2020-2022 strategic plan and still are, are driving our, our budgeting process and thought process. Can we go to the next slide, please? So to, just to start the 2020 but 21 budget, um, let me just make a couple of statements. First, COVID has certainly impacted the 2020 plan. Despite that, we as a staff and organization has systematically adjusted the 2020 plan activities and expenses based on the realities of the COVID-19 situation that we faced at, at various moments throughout th the course of this year. As the fiscal committee meeting on October 21st, 
Staff has managed this so well, despite experiencing almost a $2 million reduction in revenue, we're, um, we are actually projecting by the end of the year to have a 450 plus thousand dollar surplus over expenses. Um, our 2021 plan, and again, it came with, with recommendations from the fiscal committee to look at it this way, is to manage the budget in a, the 2021 budget in a similar way that we've managed 2020. We don't know what COVID-19 is going to present. So consequently, we're presenting a, a 2021 budget somewhat centered around what we presented in 2020 with the notion that we have the ability to adjust and, and pull back if necessary, based on what the situation, uh, the, the COVID-19 situation uh, delivers to us. So on this slide, um, we're basic, just give you some basic points before we start looking at some of the specific numbers. Um, in general, uh, the 2021 budget does, that we're presenting, that the staff has presented to the board does not call for a assessment increase. It retains the assessment level at 708. Uh, some of the ways we are doing this um, is that there is no staff merit pay increase. Uh, this will save roughly $200,000. There also was uh, a part of the Archer uh, approved Archer plan, the, the salary and, and compensation adjustment plan. There were also some scheduled adjustments for 2021. Uh, we've also pulled those out and put them on hold for potentially being implemented in 2022 should the board approve it. Um, we've been able to negotiate a flat, uh, no increase rate on uh, many of our, several of our benefits, including dental, health, and disability coverage. Um, we're basically going to uh, re reduce our authorized headcount by one full person for 2021. If uh, need be, we may ask to bring that back in 2022, but we're going to try to shift some of those duties around the organization to other individuals. In um, 2021, staff expense will be reduced by delaying hiring three current authorized but vacant positions until the end of the first quarter, end of March 2021. Additionally, we have three re uh, retiring uh, positions that will be vacant at the end of uh, this year, and we're also going to hold those to fill those until the end of the first quarter, the end of March 2021. Um, the combination of what I just described will save uh, essentially another $200,000 from our 2021 operations. IT is, um, is very, very important to us. And I think many of you are aware we, we had some issues and struggled with, with some of our um, older uh, file servers and software. And we're very fortunate to have the IT staff that we have now, uh, but they are able uh, to they're looking at and have found a way to reduce the 2021 IT budget by um, reducing some of the contracted support and bringing that inside and, and being able to handle that themselves, moving some of our systems, including our phone system to the cloud. And they also had an authorized, an additional authorized position for 2020, which they are, um, have agreed not to fill to see if they can carry out the duties without filling that position as we go into 2021. There also, um, where there's an increase of uh, the convenience fee, um, which was being placed on credit card purchases for members, uh, the board has eliminated that, which is a good thing. However, it has increased, uh, has, has given us an $80,000 increase to the budget, which we're also handling. Uh, next slide, please. Um, our lakes aquatic vegetation and algae bloom treatment and management budget is increasing um, 86 percent, seventeen thousand uh, dollars over 2020's expenditures. And this is we've done a lot of uh, investigation into what are the right steps we should be taking. Um, we've actually prepared uh, one of the reports I've shared with the uh, online. It, it's spelled out very clearly what we're going to be doing, and we feel very confident that by adding these funds and doing what's outlined in that plan, that we will not experience what we experienced in 2020 with the algae bloom and the hydrilla uh, growth. Um, during 2020, RA will increase boat fees across the board on all size categories, essentially $12. Basically it's a dollar a month. 
Um, although we don't charge people on a monthly basis, this, this budget plans on increasing uh, boat fees, $12. Also, after reviewing other uh, rental venues and options uh, uh, that could be potentially considered competitors, we have, we have elected to increase our rental rates uh, a modest amount, which is 5%. Um, and as I've already mentioned um, somewhat, uh, during 2020, um, we reduced, uh, based on what was, uh, what was taking place with COVID-19, we reduced our seasonal staff by 257 positions, um, mainly because we didn't need them and we weren't able to offer some of the programs that they support. Um, this reduced our seasonal expense over $800,000. For 2021, we are prepared to do the same thing if need be. Um, if the situation calls for it, we will bring this in, we will bring the recommendation to the board, um, whether it's camps or pools or what, what, what they might be. So we, uh, we are looking at doing in 2021 uh, exactly what we did in 2020, uh, should COVID-19 situation require us to do so. Parks and Recreation is planning to implement uh, right now the full season of programming, but as I just made clear, it will make adjustments um, based on what the COVID-19 situation is as we start to approach the spring. And historically, the Central Services Facilities um, has brought on roughly 15 um, seasonal folks to, to help with mowing, uh, primarily with mowing and some other work. Um, the plan for seasonal staff for CSF um, this coming year is five. And I'll explain here in just, just a second. Um, so if we could go to the next slide, there we go. So in a, in a nutshell, our, our 2021 budget is focusing on key components of the strategic uh, plan, which in, still include focus on generating new non-assessment revenue as best we can going into 2021 and relying on what the circumstances COVID-19 shares with us. These, this would include growing our summer camp program and their net revenue, if possible, address the growing popularity of pickleball and rest in community. And I don't believe that's gonna be an issue. It, it's already uh, generating an enormous amount of enthusiasm. Um, and we, we're finding we have some competition for that in other nearby communities. Um, we are still planning on investing in improving what we're calling foot traffic in Lake Ann by bringing back our rental paddle boats and paddle boards and that sort of thing. Um, we will continue to investigate the possibility of adding new service and amenities our members want and uh, based on existing research and certainly would bring that to the board for consideration in 2022. Um, and we're also looking to investigate how we can provide greater access to all of our lakes for all of our members. Um, and we have some ideas around that, but we, we want to do some more investigation that will more likely be a 2022 initiative. And it, it also identify funding support for RA operations associated with services, non-members that are regularly using. Um, along with renegotiating TSA proffer commitments are all options that we are currently pursuing and will continue to pursue. So I think the next slide, if we go to the budget sheet, um, this is the revenue side. And it not, it's not confusing, but I, and I know most of you realize this, but if you see a number that's in parentheses, parentheses that means um, it's declining. Um, and if you don't see it in parentheses, it means it's increasing. It's a little bit different when we get to the expense side, but let me just kind of go through a couple of these numbers. Um, we are looking at seeing uh, when it comes to uh, account number or, or code number 1000 assessments, we're, we're, we're anticipating a slight increase in assessments. And this mainly has to do with the Valley Parks development and the Tall Oaks development which uh, accounts for roughly 80 new units. Um, and that would be roughly $58,000 in new revenue. So that's an increase. Um, as you kind of go down through these numbers, as you look at Walker Nature Center, which is coded 3,100, you're seeing a, a decline 
of, of about $15,000. And that, that has to do with the preschool camp that uh, we're not gonna be doing uh, right now. It's not planned to be done, done in per person, but will be done virtually. Um, if you go down to 3250, where it says RV boat storage and yard revenue, we're, we're actually anticipating a slight uh, increase in revenue there, primarily because of um, increasing uh, a little bit our rental rates for storing your boats and your RVs. Um, 3399, which says camp revenue. Um, we're, that, that number is coming down uh, from 2020. Uh, mainly because if you remember, and I, I know there's a lot of folks uh, were concerned about the yurt that was being proposed. Um, the yurt was actually uh, last year was being proposed as a, a support for camps. Uh, it has to do with getting kids out in inclement weather and making more space available in the lake house. Um, the DRB did not approve the yurt, so the yurt isn't there. And some of the other camps and rentals that were associated with the year in 2020 aren't going to take place. So that's essentially the majority of the money that we're, we're seeing a, a decline in for, for camps for next year. Um, Lake Ponds and Streams, that is code number 3,500. Um, the decline there in revenue has to do with, we are not uh, going to be adding the pontoon tour option to Lake Ann in 2021. Perhaps in 2022, we, we might want to bring it back, but we, we didn't think with the uncertainty with what's going on with COVID-19 that that was a wise investment or opportunity for 2021. If you look at code 4100, where it says community building uh, rent increases, that's just reflecting that 5% increase I shared earlier that were just across the board. It's a, it's a modest amount of money uh, but in compare, compared to what we've seen, the rates for our other uh, facilities like ours in the, uh, the adjacent communities, we, we don't believe it's going to create any challenges for anyone. Um, there is a typo on this, um, and it's 4,600. That, uh, where it says parks and recreation, that um, in the next version of this, we'll uh, eliminate it. That is not meant to be there. And where it shows the $70,000 uh, decrease, that's really associated with line item 4,800, which is the lake house. And that uh, projected reduction from 2022 rentals is um, basically just because we're not sure um, basically what COVID-19 is going to do to the lake house rentals and we're being um, conservative. Um, but overall, and the 2020 uh, budget shows a plan, a plan similar to 2020 with less than less about $91,000 in projected revenue uh, based on what I've outlined. Can we, can we go to the expense side, Mike, please? Now on the expense side, uh, again, this is where it's, it's a little bit different. If so something is in parentheses, it means the expense is increasing. Um, and th the majority of those, for the most part, uh, has to do with the uh, board approval and 2019-2020 um, approval of the, both the Archer compensation study and its recommended way forward. So either, um, so where you see statements like increase um, due to adjustment of salaries and benefits um, that was really associated with bringing uh, staff up to uh, midpoints or some of the other full, full year adjustments that were being made. Um, additionally, um, some of the staff that were hired uh, mid season this year is reflecting a bit of a full year salary uh, associated with their positions. Um, and it also is uh, based on any new hires. There were several folks that left uh, RA voluntarily. And when we hired their replacements based on the Archer compensation study that was approved, um, we had to bring them in close to their, the, the, the new midpoint. So that's where you're seeing most of the increases on these various line items that are associated with salaries and benefits. Um, moving down, um, 
I've already mentioned the reduction in IT expense, which is a code number 1200. That's called computer support. Um, and that's between 180 and $195,000. Uh, and again, it's, it's based on not using as much professional support, moving to the cloud, a lot of our activities and holding off on an authorized new position. Um, operating increase, um, in, that's code number 1900. You see the increase uh, there um, because uh, that's the increase associated with the con uh, convenience fee, the $80,000 that we anticipate we're now gonna be paying for that. We also have an increase in the, the headquarters lease that's taking place. And we also um, have an increase in insurance uh, expense that uh, we're gonna be picking up um, part of that in 2021. Where you see cost reductions, um, you see it in the natural areas number 3,600, pathways 3,700, and recreation and grounds 3,800. Um, this is all based on reducing seasonal labor, changing how we mow our VDOT uh, roadways in Reston, which I'll, I'll share in just a second, and reducing vehicle and equipment expense. Um, and then overall, the budget reductions that you're seeing uh, and reduction in expenses for 2021 is just about $580,000, 570,000 when compared to the 2020 uh, operating budget. Um, and as I, I continue to mention, if we see uh, COVID having a significant impact as we move forward, uh, in 2021, we will we will initiate the same sort of reductions as the same sort of actions we've been initiating so far um, uh, in 2020. Can we go to the next slide, please, Mike? Um, so, Bill, so here, here are some decision points that I'd like to share with you that the board um, is wrestling with, and um, there are three of them. Next, next slide. Um, the first has to do with CSF and. I'm not sure if everybody wrecking, uh, realizes that CFS, Parks and Rec, um, those are the two largest um, departments that we have. Uh, their budgets are very similar. CFS um, basically is subdivided into about eight, uh, whether sub-departments or sub-functional units. And what they do is really um, very significant. They have the 15 outdoor pools they have to take care of, 52 tennis courts, 55 miles of paved pathways, um, eight miles of natural pathways. They have 24 uh, highway underpasses, one overpass, uh, 113 uh, bridges, four lakes and their, you know, their dams that are associated with them, 1,300 acres of open space, 800 acres of natural areas and 53 managed me meadows, not to mention a lot of other things. Next slide, please. And here you can see, you know, that, that their budget uh, is just about $4 million. And the, um, the proposed change that we're looking to make in, um, in, in to help offset our expenses um, has to do with uh, the VDOT mowing. Can I go to the next slide, please, Mike? The... Um, I think many of you are aware that, or maybe you're not aware that the, the major highways through Reston are actually owned and controlled by VDOT. They issue a contract every five years um, that has to be renewed annually uh, that pays um, the contract awardee, which uh, we always uh, have gotten, we fight to get. Um, they pay for three MOs annually and they, they pay $45,000. That is their rule. That's all they do on any VDOT um, highway in the state. However, uh, CSF, uh, in order to make rest and look as it does, um, mows the, the uh, roadways 24 times. Mowing the VDOT roadways and medium strips more than the contracted three times is costing RA an additional $140,000 above the contract. So it's the, you know, it's a basically a hundred and eighty-five thousand dollar cost. We get paid forty-five thousand dollars to do it. Additionally, CFS, in order to execute this v, v dot roadway mowing, 
brings in labor, uh, has, has the labor that it brings in, but also contracts the turf management company to mow many of our own parks and open spaces, costing us about $200,000 annually. What is built into this budget right now, the way it, it, it's structured, and the board certainly has to make a decision on this, is um, reducing the number of mows that uh, we do on VDOT, VDOT highways. So, and we think that embracing a biophilic principle, this makes sense. Uh, and also from a, a budgeting perspective, it makes sense. And what we're, we've built into this budget is reducing the number of VDOT highway mows from 24 down to eight, eliminating the contracted mowing service used by, for RAs, parks, um, ball fields and open spaces, and utilize our current facilities uh, CSF staff in the five seasonals that we budgeted to conduct all of RA mowing. Um, these actions will reduce 2020-21 CSF's operating expense between $200,000 and $210,000. So that has been shared with the board at the last board meeting. I know it's one of the things they're, they're, they need to consider, uh, but it's one of three decisions that um, will impact the, the, the 2021 budget. Could we go to the next one? Next slide, please, Mike. Um, the other uh, thing that we, we've been looking at how we could possibly handle, ha it has to do with the Lake Throw Pool projects. Um, the current estimate for the Lake Throw Pool is between 2.9 and $3.5 million. Um, an estimate of an estimated basically $3.1 million uh, needed beyond the $350,000 that was authorized as part of the 2020 budget. That authorization for $350,000 was to come and look at the site and do some of the basic engineering and architectural uh, uh, work to make some determinations. But to move forward, we it, it's, it's a two-year project to move forward, no matter what, it's a two-year project. And we uh, were looking at, is there a way that we could make some adjustments to our, our current cop capital expenditures that were planned for 2021 and make room to handle the 2021 expense um, uh, for the Lake Throw Pool to get it initiated and then carry it forward in 2022? Um, we have found, we, we can do that. And I'll, I'll show you here in just a second or explain here in just a second how that can happen. But uh, to the ADA uh, issue, one of the things that were brought, brought up at the last meeting was that we needed ADA accessible door. And so include it in, in the capital budget, even though we're also talking about funding Lake Throw, is ADA door openers at both the Lake House and the uh, Walker and Easter Center. The Hook Road ball field renovations that are scheduled, the Lake Audubon, pool renovations that are scheduled, the Shadowwood pool renovations that are scheduled, and the Tall Oaks pool renovations that are scheduled. Um, can we go to the next slide, please, Mike? But there were some items that we thought could be deferred, um, and those are listed on the right. And essentially, um, these deferred expenditures include the purchase of several replacement trucks and lawnmowers that are approaching, uh, but not yet at their end of life, as well as yet to be determined improvement to Lake Ann Dam. Uh, this seems, this, the Lake Ann Dam improvement is the lion's share of the 2021 capital budget expenditure. And the reason we believe that that can be deferred uh, has to do with um, the fact that, and let me just explain a little bit about what the Lake Ann Dam um, funding is for. Uh, the funds for the Lake Ann Dam are, are being deferred for making alterations based on the dams currently not meeting part of the Virginia Dam Safety Code in the event of a 500 year storm. Specifically, um, basically in the case of a 500 year storm, water would, spat, would, would basically overtax the spillway uh, and would need to go over Wheelie Avenue. Um, earlier this year, the Commonwealth was going to set a technical advisory committee, also known as a TAC, to review the dam safety regulations as many Virginia dam owners have expressed concerns of the most recent changes to the regulations and the owners, like us, inability 
to satisfy the requirements, both technically and financially. The action has been delayed because of the pandemic, COVID-19. So the, the technical advisory committee has not been set. Um, once it is set, these committees take about two years to complete their work and come back to this and would take essentially 18 to 24 months before they could even come back to us with what their recommendations are for the improvement of Lake Ann Dam and whether or not there's some wiggle room here. So no matter what, um, we're not spending the money, at least for the next 24 to 18 to 24 months on Lake Ann Dam. So we believe um, that, that Lake Throw Pool uh, funding is available should the board decide to move forward with it. Um, and we certainly have the $1.34 million uh, necessary to move forward with that and uh, the first, uh, the next phase of it in 2021. And can we have the next slide, please, Mike? And the final decision the board's wrestling with, and, and this has come out of some very productive meetings with the fiscal committee. As we start to look at Lake Thoreau and the expense uh, pool and the expense associated with that, and then started to look at some of the, uh, the other expenses associated with capital projects um, going forward, because those, those capital funding that we have, we have in place so that, that this, the work we've been doing on capital funding is basically like for like replacement. Um, it does not include um, any ADA improvements. It does not include any code requirements that uh, Fairfax County might require. It, it doesn't address any new amenities we might add to some of these improvements. It's just like for like replacement. So it's become clear that, that from again, from fiscal's input, that we don't believe we um, know exactly how much it's going to cost us. Um, and so a little more work has to be done on it. So there, um, there's a potential that the in 2022, the impact of some of these items uh, associated with capital, um, the potential implementation of the board's approved staff salary adjustments, which I, I've just shared with you have been delayed they're not taking place in 2021, but tentatively could be done in 2022. The potential 2022 staff merit pay increase, again, no merit increase for 2021. The set annual HQ lease expense increase, that's a set expense. And the potential higher capital uh, expenses associated with some of these projects um, are one factor. Additionally, the Recreations Facilities Working Group is looking at some other uh, items and they haven't gotten back to us with information. They still have a lot of work to do, so we're not quite sure what their feedback's going to be. So basically there could be a substantial increase in the assessment in 20, out, of, out of necessity in 2022. So it was suggested and a, a lot of you know, heart, heartfelt conversation was had um, and no, no decision was made that we should um, look to consider increasing the 2021 assessments up to $20 uh, and additionally. So that would take it from 708, which is what this budget has to 728. And again, that's the third major decision the board has not made yet and will need to make um, as, we, uh, as we finalize the 2021 budget. So that's kind of where we are. Um, and I, the, the next slide just says questions and comments. So now's the time for questions and comments. I'd like to let the board um, directors um, ask their questions first, and then we'll go into member comments. So are there any um, directors who would like to ask Hank a question? I believe I see John Mooney. Thank you, um, Madam President. Um, over the last several weeks, I've had conversations with um, a couple of board members and um, with members of the community about uh, the decision that we have made or are about to make uh, about which option we're going to choose for the um, 
for the reconstruction of Lake Thoreau Pool. And um, it has reminded me of the old uh, parable used in many uh, management training sessions about the train to Abilene. And that is that uh, people uh, get on the train to Abilene, they really don't want to go to Abilene, uh, no insult to Texas, but they don't want to go to Abilene. But the group decides to get on it. And so even though many in the group don't want to go to Abilene, Abilene, they think, I'm not going to rock the boat. I'm going to get on the train and I'm go to, going to go to Abilene. And, and so what I have heard is, and this, this, uh, this um, is related to what Hank said regarding slide seven in his presentation um, about um, on the, uh, well, about uh, the possibility that one reason for the decline in pool usage is that, um, that our, the features of the pool or the amenities of the pool are not as attractive as some, as some competing pools. And so there's, there's never a good time to suggest we get off the train to Abilene, it, especially once you're about to board or even started on it. But I'm going to raise the question, uh, should we go with the cheaper version one or should we take a breath, not, with, not, not substantially changing the schedule? I'm not trying to delay um, the, uh, the planning and construction of the pool, but should we, should we uh, um, entertain a, a pool that is really a flagship for our pool system. So I'll stop there. And, and I know this, you know, mentioning it at this point is not an opportune time, but, um, you know, again, the train to Abilene. So I, I want to raise that, that point. Um, I don't recollect off the top of my head what all of the differences were between um, concept one and concept two. I do know that in previous board meetings, we've talked and, and the pool meetings, we've talked about um, maybe some modifications that would allow for greater uh, lake access. Um, and I think there was a change in how you did the entry into the pool. Um, I don't know, Larry, if you recollect anything beyond that. Yeah, I was actually gonna suggest, I'm happy to jump in here. The, uh, the, the two options, John, the reason that um, those stakeholders that participated with us chose option one, it is the less expensive option, but the primary reason that it was much less destructive on the site. In other words, the existing tree cover or, or more of the existing tree cover could remain. It had much less of an impact from the standpoint of the resource protection area, which we're already gonna be struggling with just replacing the pool kind of in its general location as it is. And so, you know, essentially we're gonna have a brand new pool there and the bathhouse is gonna be like brand new. So uh, I personally am not concerned with using, uh, I don't like to call it this, the less expensive option. Cause I think we're gonna have a very, very um, fresh feeling and you know, essentially entirely brand new facility for the membership. Yeah, my, John, my, my also my recommendation is um, I, I think it's going to be a wonderful pool, but if you're looking to have a, a new flagship pool, you need your parking is going to be a big issue. You're going to want to attract more people and parking is very limited um, and by, by the very location and design at the Lake Throw site. So I, I think it's going to be a good first step into what we can do with pools, including if we're able to bring to heat the pool, which was one of the suggestions that we consider um, to extend the, the season of it. Um, but if you're looking at, at a new flag, you know, the new model with more amenities, I think making parking available, uh, greater parking is going to be a necessity so that we can have more of our members travel to, to experience it. And that's just not possible at Lake Thoreau without doing an enormous amount of damage. Thank you for your responses. Yeah, I, I think the other thing that we need to keep in mind as we look forward beyond Lake Thoreau 
is that we're going to, uh, and Larry identified this in, in uh, prior discussions, is we are going to face current building codes, one, one element of which is the parking issue, which is, if I remember correctly, Larry, isn't it a function of the size of the pool? So you have to have X number of spots depending upon the capacity of the pool? That's correct. So there are, there are other pool, other decisions that we're going to have to make that are going to um, be problematic because there just isn't space to expand the parking to meet the requirement or may, there may be an issue. So um, I think it's good that John has brought it up. Um, I also think that um, conceptually uh, we could move forward and uh, as we need to amend the, uh, the site plan to accommodate uh, needs and wants, I think we have that flexibility, particularly since it's going, the, the construction period is going to extend over two, two years. We're also still in the conceptual stage. So um, authorizing us to go forward with the pool um, allows for the next phase that has to do more with the engineering work. Um, I'd already asked the question and I know it's um, being looked into just because I thought, well, back to John's point about if it could be a heated pool that could extend the period of time that it was used. It does, of course, increase some of the operating costs, but um, that along with I think one of the members had suggested and asked the question, well, could you make a slight modification so that the, the deck of the pool could be used off season to have a better visibility of the lake? You know, so there are some um, changes, slight modifications that I believe can be done in the, within the next right phase that um, Larry, you and Chris and Laura would be bringing back to the board um, for as part of the key decision points anyways. Larry's shaking his head, yes. So, um, any other questions by the directors before I open it up to um, other members? Um, I see Mike and I wanted to acknowledge that both Sarah and Ben Iyer, our other board directors have joined our meeting uh, within the last half hour. So Mike, please. Got it. Hi, Hank, thanks for the presentation. Um, on, I think it was one of your last slides that had to do with the um, potential assessment. <clears throat> um, you mentioned that you, the staff thinks the potential assessment for 2022 could be as much as $100 higher. Um, um, I do not, but that was a number thrown out at the fiscal committee and oh, okay. so made it on the slide. Um, uh, so, okay. uh, so I can, ex I can explain it for, to you. So I'll let, let, uh, please do. Yeah, so I, I just, I don't want to be, I don't want to be saddled with that number, please. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Let, let our treasure attempt. The, right. the, what, what there are the two, ma two major components that are not in the current 2021 budget, which, um, if we look forward, mm -hmm. number one is if you implement the, the salary. Okay plan, that's going to have a material impact. And number two is we are going to be fully paying on the, uh, the lease. Right. And when you put those in, and you also factor in the amount of capital projects that are, that are already in the budget and projected for 2022, in order to have everything balanced, you're looking at, you know, you're looking at a substantially higher mm -hmm. assessment, and you know, on a back of an envelope, uh, which when you, you know, when you look out a year is is about it's probably the best that we can do without a lot of, a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It could be as much as a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically. all right, got it, got it. And then, last question. Then, if we were to say go to two fifty to split the difference on paying down some of the future. Where does that money go? Does it go into some reserve fund or how do we make sure that it's there uh, to be used in 2022? 
all the all of the in in the corporate world it all net net revenue it uh, either goes into capital in a in a private organization in our case it goes into reserves so mm -hmm. that's where the money goes so it's mm -hmm. not as if it's available you know to okay. um, sprinkle here there and everywhere right. it is by by resolution goes into the reserves. Got it. But we can uh, which reserves is it operations or capital and whatever it, it goes, is. I assume I assume we can pull it out. Uh, once it goes into the capital reserves, which you do at the end of a, any given year, it mm -hmm. stays there until the board approves it coming out. So got it. Okay. You have and and just to kind of complete the keep it short but complete the picture. The capital reserves are either allocated, in other words, there is money put aside for a particular project or it's held in a general reserve, okay? Got it. But they, it stays there until the board chooses to either cancel a project or return it to operations. Right, right, got it. Well, as long as I have the floor, I, I'd be in favor if my fellow brother, board members were to begin paying down more of 2022 than we're doing now. I know we, we tossed out $20 last time, um, but I think honestly, that was probably a number out of thin air uh, more than anything. Um, <clears throat> doesn't mean we, we couldn't do more. You know, we can pay down the lease, we can start paying off uh, more of the pool expenses in the future. And I, I would be very, very open to doing something like that. That's all, thank you. Hey. Julie, I was just- Hi, Mike, to your point, I just was going to. Mike, to your point, I was just going to simply state that uh, one of the things that came out of the last board meeting was an instruction that we're to, to look at some options. Right. So we are indeed uh, looking at uh, various scenarios to share with the board, so you you guys would you have more information and make some decisions around. Right. Yeah, I remember. Thank you, Hank. Sure, you're welcome. Um, ben, I believe you wanted to. Um... <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, I think it's very important to make this correction. I've heard uh, this, you say, Bob, just now, and also in an email, you said, in fact, you quoted the deed to say that anything that's left out from the operating expenses goes into reserve, and that's in the deed. That's not true. That That is not that, that is not true. What has been happening is that any of the monies that we've had in our operating surplus, which is the name that was given to basically the checking account where all our assessment monies go, anytime we do not use the money at the end of the year, which has been every year on an average of $250,000, that money stays in a checking account collecting pennies to the dollar of interest. It doesn't go to, it doesn't, first off, the correction is there's nothing in the deed that says it has to go to a reserve. It has stayed in that checking account, which is how we have accumulated more money by just collecting more money from our members than what we need to spend. So I want to make sure that that correction, it's an important one. I, I don't mean to call you out like this, but it's important that the board members understand that it does not have to go to the reserve funds uh, and it has been sitting in nothing but a checking account. Uh, the other question I have for you is, was the fiscal committee and were you able to discover and find out what happened to the monies that we actually saved from renegotiating the lease because that did happen, that we renegotiated the lease and we saved money over the term of the lease. I know in a lease you pay less in prior years and pay more later on, but in that we were going to take an average and we were to estimate that for all the term of the lease if that did not happen. However we did it, we were supposed to save money. I suspect that got rolled into other categories and now we are falsely attributing the assessment increase to the lease. 
and that should not happen. I, I, I am very certain that the lease is not the reason why assessments are going up. All right. Um, I believe Bob had wanted to also speak, and I let Ben go ahead. I saw Ben, I saw Aaron, and Karen. Um, did anyone... Bob, you, would you like to possibly respond also to Ben and, and whatever? Right. Yes. Um, if, you, uh, if I'm wrong, I stand corrected. Um, but it, it has been my understanding that the monies in, ex, in excess of expenses have largely gone into the capital reserves. Now, how that money gets invested um, is, a, is another issue, um, which uh, we need to sit down with our uh, money manager and discuss. Um, but your point, you know, your, if I will assume what you say is correct, and we will be, you know, looking into it. Uh, there is absolutely no other ways about it. There, there's nothing, especially in the deed. And I, I just want to make sure 100% because last time uh, there was some back and forth and discussions and somebody said that maybe they don't understand some of the budget matters. And I want to make sure that this is an important time in decision making. So each one of your votes is important during this time. And, you know, you, you have to, each one of you has to understand all these details about uh, the budget and about the deed and there's nothing in the deed that says this. So please do whatever due diligence you want to do, whatever homework, uh, you can ask each other questions. I've been on the fiscal committee for three years and prior to that I was active for a year. So you can ask me questions if you like, but there are other folks who can ask questions in the fiscal committee as well. Madam Chair, may I be recognized please? You may. Section V.15A of the deed speaks to amounts accumulated in excess of the amount for actual expenses and reserves. So I would direct the directors to that particular clause, uh, which speaks of what we should do with surpluses, which I believe Director Iyer is referencing. And I'm, 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 my recollection, well, not recollection, each year when we pass the budget, we as a board vote to how much money we put in triple RF and CARP. So it is a board action. Um, Aaron. I believe Director uh, Anton uh, desired to speak before me. Oh, it's okay. You can go ahead, Aaron, if you want. Um, thank you. Uh, uh, our, uh, our council kind of stole some of my thunder. I was going to read uh, <laughs> section 514A in the deed, which reads, any amount accumulated in excess of the amount required for actual expenses and revenues shall, at the direction of the board of directors, be placed in reserve accounts or be expended solely for the general welfare of the owners. I think it is expressly uh, stated in the deed that any extra funds go into a reserve account or are spent as directed by the board of directors. So it's entirely within our hands to ensure that these funds go into a reserve account. Now, as uh, the treasurer mentioned, how they're invested in things, that's another matter and, and can be looked into. Uh, but I don't believe they're just sitting there uh, in a standard savings account. Uh, I would like to respond to that, please. Okay, so hey, it is at the it is at the direction of the board, and in the last four years I've been on the board, Aaron, I can assure you that nothing has gone to the car for the ARF. Whatever has been going to these reserve funds has been as per the algorithm that was established many years ago in the financial resolution. And I can assure you, I think you're in the fiscal committee or the liaison, you should know this, but you can talk to the fiscal committee tomorrow and find out where all this money has been sitting. It has been sitting in a checking account 
gathering pennies to the dollar. In fact, that was the funds that was used to pay off the, the lake house loan. It was not in a reserve fund. So what you're reading are just words about how, what the board can do, but what actually has been happening is it's been sitting in a checking account, gathering pennies to the dollar, and by, used by the board basically at its will to uh, pay off its past mistakes like the lake house. All right, Karen. Uh, my question was about um, Lake Thoreau. We had had some discussions um, a while back about um, uh, pay as you go or financing. And I haven't heard anything lately about that. Has, has there been, have you all looked at a, a budget that would, that would reflect financing rather than splitting the costs over the two years? I might take a shot at that though, Hank, if you wanted to respond, I was going to um, reference the fact that the fiscal committee has asked um, for the board to support their um, analysis in the next number of months, um, supporting both the recreational facilities working group, capital projects, forecasting and funding, and uh, I'm missing one item off the top of my head. Um, but part of that was to be able to come back to the board to help us look at um, not just, you know, it seems like they've figured out a way, at least for the first year of Lake Thoreau funding, but perhaps as we look at the additional pools and whatever requirements are, um, there might be some other alternative ways to address that. And I think that's planned for, and Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, and, and um, Chris, Hank. It, it, that, that, that's correct. We, for, for the Lake Throw Pool, we, um, as I shared with some of the board members, if we don't get started on it this year, it's going to be out, it's going to be down for three to four years. So we're suggesting you get started on it. It's uh, based on the feedback from the community and based on um, our records of its usage, it's kind of right in the middle. It's, it's used more than most. Um, it's a popular pool, the community wants it, and we think the dollar should be invested in it. And right now we're not sure if taking out a loan for one pool is a smart idea, that um, as we look at, uh, and this is why I mentioned the um, Recreation Facilities Working Groups a study that when they come back to us with information um, of what they're recommending, um, it might be that if, we, if we're looking at uh, taking borrowing money to address some of these issues, we should maybe look at, at it in a bigger way and not a one-off way. And so that's why, um, among other reasons, uh, we're recommending going forward with Lake Throw Pool this year. Uh, one, because we can defer some of the money the, the, as I already shared, the, the majority of the, the capital money this year is for Lake Ann Dam. And based on what the state's doing, that's that's on hold anyways. And um, we, we can handle it. And it gives it gives the Recreation Facilities Working Group time to do their work so that we can we have more data to make better decisions. That, so. Okay. Um, can I just say one more thing? Tom is on the line. Uh, to to Ven's question, could you please share where we invest our money? Yeah, uh, I wanted to address that. Uh, the last two years, I tried to address that, the excess cash that we have, and we had a difference what the excess cash was, but I needed to know what a minimum balance should be for us to carry, and then what the excess was, we put into an investment account with SunTrust, so it does earn uh, higher than pennies on the dollar, just to clarify. Right, and the operating um, cash, I mean, every year we need to have X amount to carry us over into the new year when we start getting our assessment revenues. Right, and if you, if you remember my presentation, you if you remember my presentation last year, I yeah. tried to establish what the minimum cash balance should be and then take that excess and, and put it into an investment account to earn additional revenue. 
But as Bob said, um, between, I know you have it on your agenda to work with fiscal committee and, and um, Tom um, looking at the investment options. I, I remember a couple of years ago, we did um, kind of a board survey of tolerance. So Bob, you wanted to speak. Yes, I wanted to say that uh, as Hank uh, has mentioned, um, we should not be borrowing money just to, for a single project. Um, and um, this comes, the, this particular project comes at kind of the, kind of the crest of the wave yeah. of many other projects that are, that will be coming, um, coming due in the next five to seven years. Right. So the, the thrust of the, of the fiscal committee working with staff and working with the work, uh, the facilities working group is to lay out as concretely as possible what the cash needs will be, and then to make sure that the membership is aware of what the cash needs will be, so that you can make an informed decision about whether uh, they will be willing to absorb increased assessments or would prefer another venue. I'm not suggesting one, one, one approach or another. We don't have the information as yet, but in order to you know, give you a concrete uh, decision, but at this juncture, there are a lot of, a lot of balls in the air. And um, as, as we get better, better numbers and get better timing, the closer to today that you spend the money, you got to have the you got to have the cash to do it. So it's it's um, it is. Let's just say it's complicated, and um, the 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 first the first project is is like the road. So yeah, I'm um, working on it, and you've got the 2022-2023 biennial which is where you're gonna to begin to see that five pools, four tennis courts, whatever that are near term looking at us. John Mooney, you wanted to speak. Thank you, Madam President. Two quick points. One is, uh, as I believe my colleagues know, uh, I, I have strongly urged that we seriously consider financing for at least some of our larger ticket and longer, longer lived uh, capital projects, but I, uh, have, have been persuaded uh, earlier in earlier discussions that uh, we're not ready to do that yet and certainly not with Lake Thoreau. Second point um, for my colleague, uh, Mike Collins. Mike, I, I believe that the, uh, the idea of a $20 increase in the assessment came actually from a, from a recommendation from the fiscal committee. So that, that's where that uh, my memory is that's where that uh, figure came from. Right, right, it did. I just, I didn't get the sense from David that it was a calculated amount. You know, it, it was, an, it was a, a, this sounds good, kind of let's start buying it down kind of amount. That's what I meant. Yeah. It, it is, it is based on, on largely on uh, normalizing the rental. Right, the headquarters. that's right, that's right, thank you. So if you, if you take the, um, the remaining tenant improvement allowance that we have um, and you look at what we're going to pay in cash on rental this year, it's going to be about four hundred and about four hundred thousand dollars lower than it would have been had we had to pay you know dollar for dollar according to the contract. And that's all part of the negotiation. So right. Okay, thank you. That's, Thanks for the reminder. It. Karen? Yep. But just to clarify, it was, the recommendation was an amount not to exceed $20. Exactly, yes. Okay. Um, one question Ben asked, and I don't think it really got answered for him or anyone else who might have that same question, was about the lease and the savings that we got up front on the lease. Um, where did those savings uh, perhaps go, and how are we addressing? Because that's part of why we're looking at this. Okay, we, we're okay probably for 2020, but we know we're facing at least, as Hank said, our operating costs. I think it was cost center 
1,800 um, that our operation costs reflect an increase in our um, rental costs. And um, so if somebody could take a stab at answering Ben's question on the lease, I think that would be beneficial. Tom, could you could you address that? It, it's basically we, we took some of these savings this year, um, and we also have uh, initiated the lease improvements, which we had a deadline to do. I don't remember the specific timing we had on that, but Tom, I think you you might. Sure. Um, in twenty twenty, we will have paid about two hundred fifteen thousand. Payment, lease payments because we've had a 50% reduction. And then when Tony renegotiated the lease through COVID, we had a period of five or six months that we didn't have to pay our lease at all. So in next year's budget, I started out taking the excess tenant improvement money per the lease. Uh, I think Chris estimates he's going to wind up spending 300000 towards tenant improvements. And that would leave us about $426,000 that weren't utilized that could be offset against the lease. So that's gonna happen in 2021. So we should have paid, if the lease was, if the lease payment was made $922,000 in 2021, but we would be able to utilize that 426. So when I budgeted it, I did 495. But if you were to take with all the escalation for the lease on the books, the amount that should be recognized as lease expense would be 982,000. So that's a difference of 486,000. And that's what I think Bob and Dave Kerr have been trying to say that um, that should be spread out over you know, the remainder of the lease through 2030 when the lease is up, that that should be the amount in the budget and that that 486 is gonna hit us in 2022. And that's what the buffer of the $20 was, was recognized for. Did that explain it well enough or? I have one more question. When um, we <coughs> negotiate a deferral of our rental, all it did was push it down the road. Right, it yeah. added on to the lease well, payments. Oh, here, we're going to give you some money back. It wasn't like that. It was right. It, it, it just deferred it in 2020. And then it basically kicked it down the road. It's it's included in, in each lease payment that we'll make through 2030. Yes, ma'am. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mike. Oh, got it. <clears throat> Question for Larry. This is taken back to Ken Fredgren's uh, presentation. He mentioned a parking lot, and I want to say it was Temporary Road. Uh, mm -hmm. that is, it, that, that's where they were requesting some improvements and you'd walk the site. And he, he said that he thought that was on the capital improvements list for 2021. Is, is that right? The, the repaving of the parking lot is, um, the, the numbers and we've done just with working with the landscape architect, uh, Kimley Horn, our on call mm -hmm. engineering, we got rough orders of magnitude for both those projects for all of the accessibility improvements at Temporary Road, it's about 150,000. Mm -hmm. Or North Hills Park and Pavilion, it's about 100,000. Right. And you know, as as Ken mentioned, we're already going to be doing asphalt work at Temporary Road next year, and that's just basically you know capping the parking lot. That would be time you know we think to consider leveling a spot and so forth, and then at least perhaps doing part of the accessibility improvements because mm. uh, the big one out there is that the bathrooms are totally inaccessible from an ADA standpoint. So we need to bring them to the parking lot and do a lot more work in the parking lot. So it'd be you know, certainly more expensive, but that was mm. the timing issue. So the parking lot is in, but not the rest of those improvements. Got it. But <clears throat> is it going to cost more to do the work later? I mean, by deferring some of the work, does that mean there's going to be some wasted work along the way? Am yeah, I making. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I understand. There, there are economies of scale. While well, you've got an asphalt contractor out there mm -hmm. to do at least all the asphalt piece at one time. Right. And, it, and it, of course, it would require we have to go to the design review board and so forth because you're changing locations of a 
you know, a bathroom enclosure and things like that. But at least from the parking lot standpoint, it would make sense to, to you know, join those together. Okay. So you're doing everything. Am I reading, hearing you right, that you're doing everything that has to do, that could be done at the same time as the repaving? We, no. That okay. Is, that is a board decision. We have to, Chris and I will have to figure out, we have to split up the, that rough order magnitude cost that we got mm -hmm. from the contractor to, to figure out what's specifically parking lot versus the other pieces of accessibility to the pavilion yeah. and, and things like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm getting at is I really don't want to miss the boat uh, if we're doing work already to do as much as, as it makes sense to do uh, this year. If that means we do bathrooms another year, I, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about the site, but I, I just don't want to, like I said, miss the boat and not do as much as we can. No, I understand. Yeah, I think, so Chris and I can get, we can, I think we can get with that contractor and kind of pick apart those, you know, the numbers that he provided. Mm -hmm. um, is there enough, if there, is there enough money in the budget to do extra things? I mean, it seems like we need to give you more money if that's what you want. Well, the current, that's what you need. That's what you need well, rather. Well, the current capital budget does not have anything other than just straight repaving of the parking lot. It does not, it has not factored in any accessibility improvements. And as I said, we can get those numbers relatively quickly, I think. Okay. Get those Got out it. board, you know, certainly in advance of the November 19th meeting. Okay. But you read my, you read my mind. That's exactly what I was going to ask. Okay. Thanks, Larry. Yeah. Thanks, I would Larry. love to see those too. Ron else um, from the board that wanted to ask a question before we turn to our members. I think Finn had a question or was going to speak. Did you wish to go ahead, Bob? Did you have another question? No, I'm I'm fine. I, I was just I thought Finn Finn was going to make a point. No, that's fine, Bob. Thank you. Uh, get more. So. Are you great, Ben? For are you okay then, Ben, to move on to members for a comment? Everybody yeah, that's ahead? fine. Let's move on. It's uh, their listening session. We can move on to that. Yeah. Great. Okay. I know that Tammy wanted to ask a question when we got to member comments, so I'm going to call on her first. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you, um, Tammy Petrine, 2503 Foxcroft Way. Thank you, first of all, everyone who is working so hard on this, all the staff and, and the board. Um, I want to approach this and make a couple comments coming from a different angle. Um, first of all, I want to say to Hank, I know you've been working your buns off, and but I want to point out to you that this current situation is radically different from when you came on board. We have almost, we're almost in a twilight zone situation. We not only have crazy um, politics, we have COVID, we have the perfect storm when almost all of our amenities are coming due for refurbishment at exactly the same time. It's a very intense, crazy, challenge that staff and the board has. The board changes about a third every single year. So what you were asked to do with um, non-assessment revenue probably is not valid anymore. Um, I serve on the Rest in Planning and Zoning Commission. Larry goes to most of the meetings. He can back this up. Every single project that comes through Reston, we beg, plead, we have a form that they have to fill out before they come before us for, for, our, for our information as, as committee members asking, are you going to join RA? And across the board, if it's a TSA deal, the answer is probably not unless it's for sale property. Most of the property is not for sale. It's rental if it's residential. So um, chasing a mythical new um, category of member 
probably isn't going to work. Uh, when Supervisor Hudgens was in power, <clears throat> she goofed up and didn't make uh, membership in RA or RTCA um, mandatory. And they have no design principles. We all know that. I don't think she goofed up. I will tell you unequivocally, diving into the county deeply, the county is run by developers for developers and it's across the board. So trying to get blood out of that rock, they are trying to maximize every penny they can of profit at the detriment of fine planning and architectural uh, supremacy and uh, environmental um, being efficient in their buildings. It's, it's, just, it's just a nightmare. So I do want to say there's one place where you might be able to get the TSA areas to contribute to RA, and that is with your mowing project. If you're going down to eight a year and they're used to all these manicured areas, especially by rest in town center and what they call the gateway to the community where you get off the tollway and they want to want to, you know, make you go to RTC, the rest in town center, uh, that you may not, you may be able to get an opportunity to, to have them contribute to that VDOT contract. That I would say is a possibility. And I wish it were different. Um, we are told over and over again with rentals, there is no, that they're in such high competition. They've overbuilt rentals. They're trying to get every maximum buck they can. They can't even get people in the darn things. They aren't going to pay dues to RA for every unit. So, and they all, they have, they have concierge service. They have weight rooms and they have pools mm -hmm. having a pool is like having a roof on your apartment it's required me, you know so that's that's one tammy yeah. hey tammy um we typically are three minutes um i am checking to find out whether or not there's any time limit on a public hearing well but, yeah i mean okay, so it started at 6 30 it's eight o'clock I do want to share this stuff with you because I think it will help you. I understand. That's I don't up to you. You can go ahead and call on other people. Um, you know, if, if people are waiting to speak, I'm, not, I'm unaware of that. Your choice. Let, let me just do a, a check to see if we've got, Sean, do we have anyone else who wanted to speak or can I allow um, Tammy to go on to her second point? Uh, we do not have anyone listed. We did get Jennifer commenting in the chat. Jennifer, would you like to speak? At this time, if there's anybody else that would like to make a comment, you could raise your hand in the participants tab. Otherwise, Julie, I don't see anybody else. Okay, Tammy, why don't you go ahead? Okay, so I would like to ap approach the budget concept from a little different angle. And that is, instead of trying to, I mean, we, there are members in of RA who can well afford the $20 extra. There are others who are, have lost jobs, etc. In addition to the COVID crisis with people losing jobs and being in crisis, and thank you for knocking away the fees for those people. I, I'm sure they appreciate it. My heart goes out to them. Um, I would want to say that how about looking at reducing the cost of stuff? Um, last week we were talking, or last meeting, we were talking about putting on the automatic openers on doors. And I know this was a seat of the pants uh, estimate of 10 grand each. That's crazy. The highest price door opener we could find online. Uh, commercial door opener was two grand. It's, it doesn't cost 8,000 to install the darn thing. So I would like to look at prices of stuff and be sure that we're getting really competitive bids on things rather than just assuming pools are gonna cost 3.5 million or whatever. Um, I think that's one area. The other thing that I have a a huge problem with 
is the communications budget of almost a million dollars. We have Chris working his butt off with a couple assistants doing all of the capital projects of all of our public amenities. And here we have, his costs are nowhere near communications and we don't need a million dollar communication budget. I really think that is one thing cost that's really outrageous. I hate to say that. Um, I, I know the people in that department are gonna be horrified, but communications is a huge problem. Uh, you have a, a rest in now printing stuff that I thought there would be a hundred people here tonight after that chick puts out that there might be a hundred dollar bump up in the in the assessment and you know thank god not many people read that uh thing but i we just really i would like to pare down the costs of running the business run it lean and mean we pay 4.7 cents to rcc we're going to always pay that we can't get them to reduce it take the programming that isn't directly involved with our amenities. Our amenities are pools and uh, the programming part, pools and the courts and our nature house. Leave that programming alone, but take all the superfluous other programming away. Society has changed. Two parents, if there are two parents in a household, are working. They have childcare. They have to have childcare 52 weeks a year. Are they really going to say to their childcare, hey, I'm taking my children out for six weeks worth of camp or four weeks worth of camp? I don't know how that works, but I'd like to, to, to look at that and see if we can't give camps to RCC to run so we don't have duplicate services. We don't need to be paying for books for babies. We don't need to be running movies on the lake. RCC can do that in cooperation with RA. RA has the space, RCC has the staff and can use some of these surplus RA staff to buck up their thing, but put that over on them and yeah. reduce RA's expenses. Thank and, you very much. I mean, Hank, do you want to address Tammy's last point about RCC and programming? Um, uh, yes, uh, we, we have been in, in communications with RCC. We are looking at ways that we can uh, mutually support one another uh, where they have content and we have space. There are um, legal concerns and issues that uh, have to also be factored into all of these things, including insurance. But uh, I, I, I think the points you've made um, in, many, in many respects make sense and we're looking into uh, essentially everything you, you've outlined. Um, so, however, uh, there is, um, there's only, there's, there's only so much, I, I think there's a mis complete misunderstanding of what communications does. And there is um, an enormous amount of work that goes into communications, an enormous amount of communications that needs to take place with roughly 60,000 people that are members. And so that we can, in some way, shape, or form, um, uh, make sure that we are serving all of their their needs and wants. Um, and uh, I simply right now in front of me have a three page list of everything that communications does, um, which is pretty intense. So uh, we can talk about all these things offline, um, but uh, we are indeed streamlining as best we can. We're definitely looking at costs and how we can reduce them. And certainly uh, we um, are working with RCC to make sure that we're providing the community with what it needs and wants in the most efficient way that we possibly can. But again, there, there are legal and there are insurance issues involved with all these things that uh, complicate it. So, but we, we can talk offline. I can bring you up to speed on some other things offline. Thank you. Yep. Is there anyone else, uh, members, who would like to make a, a comment? Any further questions from directors? I believe as a public hearing, it's there isn't any action to be taken. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I 
You could bring the agenda back up, but I believe that's about where we are. Uh, Bob? Um, I, I truly uh, want to uh, thank the, the, the folks that joined the call tonight, but I want to really admonish the general membership for a lack of, uh, of concern and participation. We're spending their money. And, Lord. Um, it is, uh, I've, you know, for, um, there were probably six to eight people on the Zoom meeting and another four that are watching on YouTube. And that, that just, it just, uh, you know, uh, it's flummoxing that, you know, all the work that's been put into this and uh, we, we don't hear, you know, we don't get their input until after a decision's made and then they don't like it, so. Yeah, Sarah, I believe I now see you and I believe you'd like to speak. I'm gonna turn off the camera so my internet works. Okay. I have to, just a comment and I, I feel your pain, Bob, I understand. Um, you know, we would love to see more members participate. At the same time, this is coming from a communications and outreach background. This is where Hank, your team is failing. When we're spending a million dollars on communications, we need to be proactive and figure out a way to get our membership to show up. And that's where we need to look at out of the box ideas. How are we reaching out to them? Is our messaging actually being effective? And there needs to be some absolute accountability with that. And that's, you know, it's just from my background. It's just sad to see that part. I'm not saying anybody's doing anything wrong. I'm just saying we need to take a more proactive approach. Thank you. Anyone else? Ben, did I see that you had wanted to um, speak? I saw a highlighting of, uh, around Sarah's block, so I could see that she wanted to speak. Um, and I had seen a yellow highlight around your block there for a moment. No, I was just saying um, word, I second what Bob said about the membership participation. Every year it has been two members, three members uh, on an average show up on the listening sessions as well as the budget sessions. and. Uh, we really need more grassroots level participation in order to shape the direction of where this organization is headed. And um, that's what I would like to see. So hopefully that will get through to the membership. Well, I certainly wish as well as you that we had uh, more. Uh, and I want to thank Hank and Larry and Tom and the fiscal committee, you know, all of the senior leadership team and their contributions and both um, holding the line at a quote unquote 708 kind of a operating uh, budget, um, but also ex exposing to the rest of the directors some of the nuances that we need to address with regard to the lease and some of our increased operations cost. I know we've got the insurance study going on to uh, make sure that we're properly um, getting the right kind of insurance and getting proper um, competitive costs. I think Tammy's made a good point that um, uh, I know we're all striving and, and seek uh, Chris and his team to get the best deals we can. Uh, I know that sometimes in, in the kind of work that we need done right now, we'll get, only get one, maybe two bidders. And uh, they're not always uh, apples and apples comparisons. So we're a little, little um, st struck by that. Um, so um, unless there's any further comments by the directors or members that they wish to share, I think that this um, for me has proved to be uh, worthwhile uh, in many aspects, much more even than, than uh, some of our previous board meetings. We've really gotten, I think, to the crux. Karen, did you wish to say something? I just wanted to say that um, I, I agree that it's unfortunate that there was such a low member turnout tonight, but I, I would not attribute it to failure on the part of the communications department. 
um, so much as uh, everything else that's going on. Um, yesterday was our election. I think a lot of people were up very late and maybe they were just uh, too tired. I mean, it's COVID, it's so many, so many things. So, Karen, this is not the first meeting we haven't had a good show of. So, no, I know I there know. are some, some little tweaks that can be done, but and I, yeah, maybe so. criticism. I certainly think if people are interested, it's not hard to find the information. So I don't, I don't know what, what more we can do. That's the discussion for another time, perhaps. But yeah. as Tammy said, Rustin now certainly might have, uh, you would have thought, generated a bit more um, participation. But that's okay. Um, Mike. Right. I mean, just real quick, it's not like we've ever had good participation. Oh, at the, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem that people have tried to solve for at least the 10 years I've been in Reston. So let's not, do, re, let's not forget that fact and, and assume that something's wrong. Right, right. Um, if it was a public company and we're spending a million dollars on communications, we'd expect to see some results. I'm not hashing the staff. It was just constructive. Well, yeah. And that's I mean, my comment is not, thank you, Julie. Okay, I, and actually, Sarah, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with you about um, the need to, to maybe take a hard look at that budget. Um, I don't know. I don't have a preconceived notion whatsoever. But we don't really have the tools to do that. The way we get the budget is, frankly, this is not the right word, but I'll use it anyway. Dumped on us uh, in August or or September. And I apologize for that word. But we don't get the detail. We do, if we just said, oh, make a 10% cut to communications or, or whatever, we would have no idea how that would impact uh, the core services and what we all agree we want the communications uh, uh, department to do. And this goes across the board. You know, Across the board, I don't think any uh, board member could really defend uh, the number that we're voting on. To, to be honest with you, we trust staff. I, I really, really do. I don't think they're larding the budget in any way. But we, as board members, can't haven't been able to get into that level of detail, uh, and I think that's something we ought to we ought to think about doing in the next year. Yes. So um, I I um, have heard throughout our member listening sessions, I've heard uh, many of the board directors um, concern about the communications cost center item. So perhaps that's something that between Hank and and Larry and Mike, uh, we might be able to provide a bit more information to the board directors as part of the November 19th packet, just a, a little bit more of a drill down. I thought I saw something, but I'd have to go back through some of my emails uh, to see, because I think there was a question asked of that and it might not have gotten shared with all of the board. So let me circle through that. I, I think that there was something I saw. So let me see, but I do think it's a, a, an open question that we need to have a better uh, comfort level on. So if there's no other questions, I would entertain a motion. So to... move. <laughs> can, I, can I interrupt for just one second? Okay. To remind directors that uh, tomorrow at three o'clock, uh, Mike is going to have uh, Mike Leone is having a session on communications. Ah, right. Zoom meeting, so yep. uh, be there or be square, as they say. <laughs> Opportunity to see and hear that drill down on our own. Okay, so I heard a motion from John Mooney to adjourn. Second. A second from Bob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ben and Sarah? Aye. Good? Aye. Thank you, and a very blessed night to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now, everybody. Good night, all. Bye. Good night.